Open Buildings Designer helps automate joist girder modeling by utilizing standard shapes and series configurations. The joist girder tool supports the creation and modification of joist girders with parallel cords. To begin, we must expand the options next to place trusses and select the place joist girders tool. Having the place mode selected, we specify the start and end point of our joist girder span. The place joist girder window opens. The spans tree on the left displays choices of girder spaces and joist depths for spans equal to or greater than the distance defined by the placement mode data points. Choices are based on industry standard joist girder tables encoded in the joist girder setting XML file located in the active data set folders. Each span in the tree contains a set of girder spaces and depths for that span. Clicking span expands the tree to display all the girder spaces available for that span. Similarly, clicking individual girder spaces entries expands the tree further revealing the available joist depths. Selecting the depth in the tree automatically sets the property values. Next, in the properties, we have the option to set the series. This controls the geometry of the diagonal and vertical members in the joist girder assemblies with respect to panel points. Panel points are defined as the location where one or more web members intersect the top or bottom cords of a joist girder. Next, we have the girder spaces option, which lets us determine the number of spaces in the joist girder. Then we have the option to specify the joist girder depth, the panel point load values, the seat depth, and the option to add detailed members. When on, top and bottom cords, web members, and seats are modeled in full detail. When off, only the joist envelope is modeled. In the section tab, we can manually specify which structural member profile should be used. And in the family and part section, we can assign the appropriate family and part definition. Next, in the end details section, we can adjust settings which determine the configuration at the joist girder ends. Seat bearing determines the length of the seat bearing members which rest on the support element. Top cord extension determines the distance the top cord extends beyond the seat bearing point. The bottom cord extension determines the distance the bottom cord extends inside the seat bearing point. To place the joist girder, select the place button. The joist girder is now placed in our model, however the elements are encased in an envelope element. To remove this, we must drop the element and then select the envelope and remove it. We can now see the interior of the joist girder. To generate a report of the quantities, we must select the Structural Quantity Spreadsheet tool. This opens an Excel file which automatically scans our model and becomes populated with data regarding the structural members within our model. We can see things such as the section names, lengths, and various other properties. This concludes the modeling of a joist girder. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with others. If you want to see more like it, please consider subscribing to this and Bentley's other channels. Thank you and see you next time.